me welcome, actually, hold on. We're going to have our first speaker be Sherry, and she's going to speak from the Competent Communication Manual number eight, Get Comfortable with Visual Aids. Her objectives for today's speech are to select visual aids that are appropriate for your message and the audience, use the visual aids correctly with ease and confidence, and her speech time, like Plan said, is five to seven minutes. The title of her speech is Three Miracles That Saved Our Lives. She will talk about three consecutive miracles that saved her and her family from certain tragedy during the Thanksgiving storm in Southern California in the early 1970s. So please help me welcome Sherry. Well, good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I wrote this story yesterday for my mother, who is sick today, so she couldn't be here, so I'm a little sad about that. But I want to tell you the story of, of the Thanksgiving storm that happened in the early 70s. I was seven years old, so this is from an unusual perspective. I've asked my parents about the story. I used to have my grandparents tell me the story over and over again. Uh, it was a Thanksgiving weekend. We were on my grandparents' three-story yacht. So this was a big, big boat. This is not a small dinghy. This is like a 65-foot American cruiser with twin diesel engines. This is a big monster boat. Uh, it was about 8 o'clock at night one night, and we were staying in Cat Harbor on Catalina Island. Now, this is Southern California. I gave you guys actual pictures because I didn't want you to have to stare at my lovely drawing um, We used to port in King Harbor, which is right north of Palos Verdes Peninsula in Southern California. And we were staying in Catalina Harbor, and I call it Cat Harbor from now on. It's just my nickname for it. So we're here in this Cat Harbor. It's a southern-facing port, which is an all-weather port. That means that no matter what happens, you should be safe in that harbor. <laughs> You're not, nothing's supposed to happen to you there. It's an all weather. Typical storms would come out of the north or out of the west. So it was very unusual that we got a southern storm with that mouth facing the south. So 8 o'clock at night, um, high winds, the storm's blowing. We figured we're safe. Nothing's going to happen to us. Everything's fine. All of a sudden, we hear a big bang. My grandfather and my father ran out of the, out. they thought we hit a boat or something and hit us or we'd run aground. You know, just, we didn't know what happened. Run out to find that the buoy line had snapped. What is a buoy you have? <laughs> there we go. When you tie off in the middle of, of a harbor without docks, this is without the docks, you tie up to a mooring buoy. It's a big floating metal ball with a, an anchor, and it's not really an anchor, it's a block of cement at the bottom hooked to a chain. And this is a big three inch for the size boat that we have. So this is a pretty big rope. Three inch in diameter buoy line that attaches to the boat. This is the bow line. This is what holds the front of the boat. The back line is only two inches. It's a, it's a weaker line. So this is the mooring buoy that I'm referring to. That had snapped. So this big giant boat swinging, just starts swinging. And there's other boats in the harbor, by the way. So as it's swinging, we had such force that we drug the anchor with us a little bit over, and we would hit the next buoy. It was a miracle. This is miracle number one. We actually swung far enough so we could reach the next buoy. My grandparents grabbed the buoy line, tied up. We're now facing out of the harbor, which is not natural. You're supposed to be facing in. We're facing out towards the mouth of the harbor. It's pitch black. We can't see anything. And so my grandfather turns on the engines, leaves them on all night. We all stay up all night because we're terrified. Can't see a thing. We're waiting for first light to get out of the harbor. In the meantime, our dinghy sinks. We hear other boats crashing up on the shore. They lost dozens of boats that particular night. Um, several of them sank, and uh, several others were just destroyed. And it was, it was a pretty harrowing experience. So the next miracle is it's dawn. Light's just starting, just, just. You can just start to make out the edges of the cliffs and the hills and the other boats. And her, both of our lines snapped at once because mm -hmm. the winds had picked up, and both lines snapped. If my grandfather hadn't had the engines running, and we weren't facing that way already, we would have been up against the rocks and smashed. Our boat was so big, we were more afraid of smashing the other boats. And we wouldn't have died at that point, but we would have probably killed other people on the way. So we head out to sea. Um, it's a long, long, as you can see by the diagram that I gave you. This is a very long, narrow channel. So we're heading out, and my grandfather gets scared. And he says, Barry, that's my father, can you take the helm? there's 20 foot swells. This boat is over 20 feet tall. From the first deck, it's 13 feet to the water. And the waves were coming up over the top deck, which is just that we don't know how big the waves actually were, but they were over 20 feet because they were cresting over us. So my father takes the helm, and he heads straight out that harbor. And he's driving straight out there, and he's just 
we've got to go through it. There's no way around. You can't tack the wave. Tacking means you go at a diagonal. You can't tack the wave. You just had to go up and over through this wave. So we did it. We got out of the harbor. And if we had not had the second miracle, if we had not had that light shown at that moment when the line snapped, we would have been blind and driving in the dark. And who knows what would have happened there. So we get out to sea. My grandparents and my father, they tie me up to a chair. Because <laughs> I'm freaking out there. They're a little upset with me. But they tied me to a chair. They put me in life vest. They hand me the dog. I'm laying there in the, in the thing with the dog, screaming. My mom and my grandma are sitting next to me, trying to calm me down. Because I, I don't understand. I'm like, why are we going out to sea? Just let me off. The, the land's right there. You know, <laughs> This is not acceptable. So needless to say, we go out to sea. Um, my dad said the reason he tied me up was that he would know where I was if we did go down. He could save me. So sorry. Excuse me. But uh, he wanted to know where I was so he could find me and get me off the boat if, if we did go down. So we went out to sea. And what normally took three hours from here to here took us seven hours. We had to go because the waves were so big, my grandfather had to traverse, back, or my, and my dad, back and forth across the waves because you couldn't take the waves head on. They were so big. And all I remember is I'm tied to the chair, and I, I would just see sky, water, sky, water. Everything was breaking in the boat. All the liquor bottles were smashed. I mean, those are pretty heavy bottles. It was a big, huge, horrifying storm. Um, so six hours later, my dad calls the Coast Guard and said, we're lost. You know, this is 1970s. They don't have the same technology that we have today. He says, I know we're somewhere near the coast. I don't know where we are. The Coast Guard said, we can't help you. The storm is too rough. We're, we can't help you. There's nothing we can do. So miracle number three, at that moment, and this is no joke, I was on the deck with my father at this point. A light just shined down on Palos Verdes Peninsula. And there's a huge wreck called the Dominator that's been there for several years. And the Dominator, it just shone right on the Dominator. And then as soon as that light came down, it was gone again. And my father had his bearings. We knew where we were. He was able to find his way back to the harbor. So that's right here. And at this point, we were so close. If it had not happened at that moment, we would have crashed into the rocks. So my, grandpa, my father still has control of the boat. He gets past the breakwaters at King Harbor. That's just the big row of rocks you see that protect the harbor. And my grandfather says, I'll take the boat now. <laughs> and so he sails into the harbor like he is the big hero of the day. And my parents still laugh about that because it actually was my dad that, that saved us that day. So if those three miracles have not happened, all three of them, um, in that order, you know, the buoy, um, the whole boat, the bow line breaking and us sliding into the next buoy, you know, the light at the end of uh, at first dawn when our lines all snapped, or that light shining down on Palos Verdes Peninsula, um, at that moment, to save us, we would have been dead at that point. That one would have killed us. Uh, those three miracles did save our lives. So thank you. Thank you.